very kitchen that epitomised so well. Gives you the highs and lows of every emotion you can name.
which was in the local newspaper, the Kentish Mercury. But it was not an article about Kitch as a footballer. It was about Kitch as a person. And it said quite simply that the most important part of his life was his very deep and sincere care and love for his family. Kitch was very modest about that because although to us he was one of the greatest, he was a very humble but very caring person. But because of his love for his family, he transferred that loyalty and the deep significance of the word family to this club. And we know how precious that word is to us. So we've come to remember Kitch, we've come to say thank you. But thank you not just for him as a great footballer, but as a very, very special person. And we know that we appreciate this club, not just as a football club that we enjoy, but a family to which we belong. And we say thank you that one of the foundations of that belief is Kitch. Jim is now going to come and share a eulogy with us, which will remind us that the most important thing we've all of us brought to this act of remembrance is our own very personal and very precious memories. Like a nation in mourning, we are grieving for our king, for us, our lion king. Except for those now over 40 who each week populated the hollow terraces of the old den, there will be no successor. Barry Kitchener, Kitch or Lurch as he was known with something much more than affection, was the first and last of a dynasty which ruled for 600 Millwall Games. We survivors who have come to terms with our passing years can take comfort in knowing that in, in being of the generation who watch Kitch at work, we are among a very privileged few. Because we witnessed week in, week out, exactly what a Millwall shirt and a Millwall heart melded into one is capable. There have been others like Harry Cripps, Keith Stevens, Terry Herlock, Neil Harris, and our present captain, Paul Robinson, who in living memory have epitomised the essence of Mill. Yet Kitchman somehow seemed on a slightly different, higher plane. We are talking of first a 19 year old youth, then a man who, between August 1967 and April 1976, Played in 375 league games, missing just seven matches in nine seasons. That is a staggering statistic in itself. But when you consider the uncompromising physicality of football in those days, when referees often turned a blind eye to many of the more brutal on and off the ball incidents, and how kids always seemed to be at the very epicenter of where the action was at its most seismic. The fact he was even able to create a club record of 244 consecutive league appearances just about defies comprehension. You see, the big guy from Dagenham seemed indestructible. Nothing, no one could apparently hurt him. Doubtless the infamous skills of his manager Benny Fenton in getting his notoriously wafer-thin squad to play through the paint barrier had something to do with it. But mainly it was Kitch, 
who was sort of a male, hen's teeth rare mindset of refusing to go down in battle lest he should show a weakness to the opposition. If in severe distress, he might begrudgingly drop to his haunches, but rarely did he allow the opposition to survey his prostrate form. That was why he was a hero to each and every one of us of our generation. He was not just a noble player, but a warrior. A Lion King who led his troops, a few in kit, the majority in scars from the front. And that is why his untimely loss at the age of just 64 is so difficult and painful to come to terms with. For more than a decade, the number five shirt belonged to Barry Kitchener and absolutely no other. During that period, he defined the mule. And in the 60s and 70s, for those other supporters younger than him and impressionable, Kit, Kit shaped indelibly both our expectations of those who were to wear later the badge of Millwall, and no less importantly, our expectations of ourselves. Typical of the man, Kitch would self-deprecatingly tell people he was not a great footballer, and some was silly enough to be taken in and believed. But those thousands of us who weakly worshipped him knew better, for no less than 120 of his initial 375 appearances yielded clean sheets. As near as David, a remarkable one that gained in three. He achieved this not just by demonstrably fearing no foe, but also consistently rising highest, stretching furthest, standing furthest. At times it appeared he was a magnet for the ball, and often the distances he could propel ahead in clearance defied the laws of physics. Today, the fans will be paying homage to our fallen leader, and doubtless at some stage will be chanting one Barry Kitch. For the younger generation, unlucky enough never to have seen this most revered of all Millwall legends in action, they will never know just how absolutely right they are.